Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play Illusion of Gaia. In the last episode, we beat Viper in the Sky Garden and got the second Mystic Statue. Our next stop was supposed to be the Kingdom of Mu, and it was supposed to be somewhere in the ocean, but Neil crashed his plane, we all ended up underneath the sea anyway, and now we're in some sort of undersea palace, and it turns out there is a passage in here that does lead to Mu after all. Of course, we had to purify the Undersea Palace first with a purification stone so the demons turned them back into humans because, well, people got kidnapped and sent back here from all the way from Frisia. And of course, all of our friends were in some sort of weird, half-transparent, unconscious state. But we did look around, we got a key, and we now have a way to get into Mu just by unlocking the door here. And opening this little passage up. So, as soon as you go in here, there's this long hallway. Lily speaks from his pocket. A passageway. I wonder if it goes clear to Moo. I don't know. Let's find out. Well, judging by the music we haven't heard before, I'm assuming it does. Lily and I set foot on Moo. They will probably welcome us after waking from a sleep of thousands of years. Anyway, we got some new enemies as well as some old ones that we met not too long ago. Such as these blue bobs. They are back. They're just as easy to defeat as ever. Because, well, we took the fight to them not too long ago. And by not too long ago, I mean the last video. Also, we have these little rock guys. And you want to be very careful with, with them because they do a good amount of damage. Only use a jump attack against them if you really have to. Sometimes they'll throw one rock, sometimes they'll throw five. If they grow if they get red and grow angry, you want to be ready to block because they're going to throw eight in eight different directions. They'll throw eight rocks in like this multi-directional attack. And sometimes you'll get them to just duck down and try to protect themselves for a bit and while they're in that little rolled up balled up kind of position. You can't really attack them until they wake up again. Also, we've opened the way up a little further, and keep this little hole in the wall in mind. We'll be using it for later. We can't use it right now. And I was trying to do the little jump attack, and that really didn't do anything at all. Don't be surprised if I go back to the dark portal, the, the dark space, because... One, dark space portals are few and far between, and you want to save your herbs for later, because there is a big battle coming up. I know, we just did one in the last video, and now we're going to do one again real soon. And as a matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and heal up right now, because I'm afraid that those things are going to kill me if I go any further with the amount of health that I have. I only have like nine hit points left. So let's just go ahead and head back to the dark space. And not record just yet. Because this is going to get rather nuts. And Well, I want to be able to do stuff and hopefully not have to use an herb. Because those things are extremely limited and they don't fully heal you. This is why you only want to save them for bosses. I should mention how this area is. This is kind of the annoying dungeon of the game. It is rather long. There's only like six areas, but it, you will be spending more time than you would expect to because, well, you will have be doing a lot of back and forth movements. You'll be going back to places you usually wouldn't. If you, I'll, or rather, you'd already been because, well, of all this water, because those are areas you can actually teleport, actually make your way to. But of course, you're going to have to do something to access those areas first. We also fought some guy in a cloak that happens to teleport in and out, and they will shoot barbells at home in on you. And you want to be ready to block in case that happens. You hit them once to go away, though you can hit them twice if you're, cl if you're quick enough. But they just teleport in, shoot fireballs, and then they 
just keep teleporting in and shooting at you. Just hit them until they're gone. Also, this chest is empty. But notice the two statues that are looking at it. We'll be seeing that a little later. And we also have these this thing that's getting in the way because, you know, my jump attack is pretty stupid. Come on. We got another one of those little cloak guys. Maybe I should... Yeah, I should scroll this area up a little more. Sometimes they appear in a, like slightly off screen or in a place you they wouldn't pop up. They would be able to pop up, but wouldn't because of the lack of water. And now we got both of these guys, but apparently I seem to have gotten these two trapped in, in a way that I want to. And I'm able to take care of them rather well. Also, I'm still at max HP, am I not? Good, I'm still at max HP. Anyway, I want to explain these things real quick. You can move these around with your telekinesis as well as your attack, if you could not already tell. And if you run into them, you get pushed in the opposite direction pretty quick. Definitely don't want to use it here, though, because you'll run into this blob. Also, the gray blobs are back. You'll want to destroy them in order to get through this little mini maze, because some of them, when they're destroyed, they'll open the path for you. Like so. And now we got to deal with two more of these simultaneously again. And you know what? I think it's time to go to take the lower route there, because I did more damage to the lower one. There we go. That's using your head. You want to be careful when you take the fight to them and be ready to block. And now we got these spikes, which will damage you if you get close enough to them. Also, there's a little temple here. Let's go inside. Room of Hope. I find it funny that the word hope isn't capitalized. There's a little altar here. Looks like two hands holding a plate of some sort. Looks like we're going to have to put something there, but we need to find out what that thing is first. For now, though, let's go ahead and destroy these guys. Ah, five points. And another one of these things to move. We'll be using these things soon enough. Now, you can go left or down. This place will eventually loop. But you'll be dealing with these guys first if you go left. There we go. I want to hit these guys twice in a row, so that way it takes less teleports for them to get destroyed in. And apparently, you have to hit them in order to wake them up. That's just kind of weird. You can't just get near them. Yeah, and use that jump attack when absolutely necessary, when you know you can do it. If they've got their throwing arms slightly in front of them, don't do it might run into the rock and take damage. Also, another empty chest. Now, if you walk down here and move around, I think Lily's supposed to give you a clue of some sort. No? Hmm. Well, we got these two things again. And apparently you're supposed to leave this area there you go. Apparently you have to leave that area and then come back here to this little spot in particular. This one pixel, just to get Lily to give you a hint. Lily speaks from his pocket. Well, I've been thinking. It appears as if the treasure chest is in the exact spot where the line of vision between both the statues cross. I wonder if this is supposed to mean something. Maybe not? Well, this is a video game. Do you expect it to not mean something? Now, here's the upper statue, there's the left statue. I think you want to stand right right here. Oh, close enough. I was almost there. Just press A around that area, and if you're in the right spot, the music will stop, and you'll find out that you've got the Statue of Hope. Turns out, this is supposed to be brought to the Room of Hope. So, you want to take it back the Room of Hope, but I want to take this little route first, so that way 
I can fight off some more enemies. There are six areas in the Kingdom of Mu. Six whole screens, if you will. Two give you hit point upgrades, two give you strength upgrades, and two give you defense upgrades. So, I think by the time we're done, we should have 23 hit points, 12 strength, 13 defense. Had to check the condition section to make sure. Also, he was really easy to uh, finish off. This one is too. Just stand just a little down of center there and you should be able to finish it off. There's nowhere else we can go, so we need to head back to the Room of Hope, which thankfully isn't that far away. All we need to do, equip the Statue of Hope, which is really well animated, by the way. I like how the waterfall on that little thing looks. He raises the Statue of Hope. A strange whisper is heard from somewhere. And strangely, the statue isn't as well animated when you place it on the altar. The Sun God, Rama. The ocean holds a power. Doesn't seem like anything happened. But when you go back, notice that the water in the lower right hand corner there is gone. Ah, there's less water than before. It looks like we can now explore new areas. And you better take advantage of them too, but you better be careful too, because now as you open up a whole new area, you'll be seeing more of those guys in the cloaks that teleport in and out. So you better be ready to fight them, in case they show up. As a matter of fact, I think I should go back. Some of those little cloak guys may pop up where they didn't before, and it's going to be very annoying. Also, a new, an new obstacle there, these little worm things. You can't kill them, and they will just eat away at your hit points if they touch you. And I was right, it's one of these guys. And I took care of him pretty easily. Still want to be careful though. There is an opening right there. And you will have to do a little bit of exploring as you move around through here. Because... Well... There are going to be a lot of forks, so you want to keep pay attention to what you're doing. It can be a little easy to get lost if, you don't, if you're not paying attention. I don't know why I'm running, because one of those guys might pop up again on me. Oh, there's another room of hope right there. We're going to have to take the statue over there. Okay, nothing? Alright. Well, at least there's something over there. Also, there's another level. I'm pretty sure that if you take the Statue of Hope, the second one, over to that second room, you'll empty this area and you'll be able to do things. Such as get that chest. I believe that's where the red jewel is. There's only one red jewel in the entirety of Mu, and I believe that's it. Anyway, let's go ahead and head back to where we were. And let's take that other uh, path down through the second level that we passed by earlier. Because there's going to be stuff that we can find as well as other things that we can destroy. And maybe we might be able to save somewhere. Who knows? Time to block. There we go. Alright. You want to run past these spikes while they're down so that, they, that way they don't hit you. And you got these things too. Also, I'm assuming that this is where the cloak guy pops up in case you didn't look for him at the top level earlier. Also, there is a dark space portal. You can transform into Frieden here. But we're not going to do that quite yet. And also, Gaia gives you a hint here. When you started this journey, Mu began to rise from the sea. Sea water still covers land in many places on the continent. When the water is gone, you will discover the location of Rama, King of Mu. And let's not record just yet. Because there are still some things that I want to do. And one of them requires being well, apparently. 
because, well, you gotta be well to do a little bit of the exploration around here. So let's take this path, avoid this worm so it doesn't destroy a little bit of our hit points here, and go down here. Now let's see. Well, we got more of these rock enemies, that's for sure. Also, that blue thing there is a ramp. That little blue strip of land there. We'll have to use one of these little bubbles to get it. So, let's drag it a little closer. There we go. Hmm. And apparently I need to, just need to uh, attack that thing, too. How do I attack this thing? Well, there we go. Well, I managed to get up there. Now, granted, I took some damage, but it was so worth it to do so. Usually it didn't give me that much trouble, especially not in the practice run. I don't know why it did that to me. Also, this clown shows back up again. Hmm, apparently I had more range than I thought when I looked left or right. That was strange. Maybe his attack range just looks wider if you look up. Also, we have five blobs here. You want to attack the ones that are confined? Because if you attack the middle one, it'll open the, these little parts up, these little compartments, and you would have to contend with all five at once. Thankfully, we didn't have to deal with that. Now, there is a fork in the road, and I'm not quite sure where to go from here. It can be a little daunting at first. Hmm. Uh... You know what, let's go up here first. This may or may not take me to... something that I need. Yeah, that just took me to, to a dead end. Also, if we went right on the second level, we would have made our way over to the third level. So we would have to go up there for enemies, and then later for something else. So this area, you might as well just go down over here. And we got another little mini maze of sorts. Those two switches will control those spikes. And you have to run all the way to the other side or else, well, the spikes will get in your way and you won't be able to get over here. Also, if you're standing on the holes when the spikes come up, you will take damage and that can happen. We also notice another hole in the wall and then we also notice this doorway. And then yet another hole in the wall. We really need something to access those little holes because I'm pretty sure those things will either give us shortcuts or allow us to access the things we hadn't normally accessed before. Oh, that's right. We haven't been on this screen ever. That's why there's that's why there are enemies here on the top level. All right. How many enemies are here? No, wrong button. Just four. Anyway, you want to run past these things. Hopefully you won't take damage, but you might. And I'm going the right way for one of the things that I want to do, because there is a dark portal in this little part of Moo here, I believe. Yep. We want to go in there because there is something useful that we need to get. We have another Psycho Power for Young Will, and... Well, let's see what it does. We got the Psycho Slider. Only Young Will can use the Psycho Slider. You can now use the sliding attack to pass through small passageways. Push the attack button when running. Boom! There it is in action. And of course she also gives some advice on what it does if we talk to her as well. Will's power is a Psycho Slider. Pass through narrow quarters using this power. Be careful not to overlook the cracks in the cliff. And let's do some more exploring. Why not? Now that we have the Psycho Slider. And for starters, we can use it to get past those worms that we just passed by earlier, as long as we uh, time our 
movement's right. And apparently I still took some dumb damage. And I completely messed it up when trying to get past those worms. Because they kept hitting me during the practice run. I was able to slide past them okay. But now the opposite's happening. Odd. Anyway. Here we go. Couldn't reach this area normally. So now that we got this area. Let's see if we can... Oh, it's another one of these ramps. Great. Yeah, judging by the amount of enemies that we see in the top level, we haven't been here at all. And I want to get it just right here, because we're going to have to move this to the ramp here. Thankfully, there is no enemies in the way. So we can just go up this ramp, no problem. How many enemies are here? Well, there were 16, but I destroyed one of them, so it's 14. Now it's 14, and now it's 13. And soon it's going to be 12. Because this guy. Use a Psycho Slider to hit them if you know you can get away with it, because I just took some dumb damage right there. Alright. And I believe... Oh, we got four of these things. Do yourself a favor and fight them off one by one. And be sure not to use your jumping attack right now, because, you know, that worm's in the way. Yeah, you definitely want to save the use of your jump attack for later. Alright, there we go. Now... We can get past these guys and find them off over here. At least we won't have to worry about that stupid worm anymore. At least not when fighting these guys. Whoa, hey. Of course, don't get too close because they will fully extend if you do. And those things do have a bit of distance to them. Alright, you can stop throwing the rocks now. That'd be great. And don't forget to use a Psycho Slider if you need to. When necessary, of course. Am I destroying the th one of the blobs here? You can actually get that statue to pop up. You want to do that because, well, we're going to find something that involves looking where the statues look yet again. First, I want to destroy all the enemies. So that way, they don't give me problems later on. Oh. There we go. And that gives us yet another statue. Now all we need to do is take care of this guy and we should get a strength bonus. Alright. So we got one of the uh, six bonuses for this area done. Now I believe you want to press A right here. That gives you the second statue of hope. But I still feel like there's stuff that I should be looking for. Oh well, as long as we get the Statue of Hope into the other Room of Hope, we should be able to open up the area fully, and we should be able to get everything else, and get all the strength, get all the stat bonuses, and we should be good to go. All I need to do is just open... I'd rather get, not open a way up, I'd rather find a way back to the dark space portal, and I should be able to heal again. Also, I may call it, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm definitely gonna call it quiz for this episode after I hit that dark portal, because I want to keep these episodes at least 20 to 30 minutes, for this one anyway. Oh, wait, it is that way. Of course, I may find another opening in the wall, maybe. So, I may have to... No, I don't think I will. Or did I? Already forgetting what it is that I did. Oh, yeah, there was one up there. That actually takes you back to the past, I think, to the back to, back to the Seaside Palace. So, we'll definitely be going in there later. Where in the world 
is the... Hmm. Maybe I should have just taken the... Yeah, I think this is the second screen. Hmm. Maybe I did go the wrong way. Yeah, I think I went the wrong way. Let's see where this leads, just to be safe. Yeah, that leads back to the shortcut leading to the to the rooms of hope. So I would have to go in this direction. I keep forgetting that I used a passage inside the wall in order to get to where I needed to go. Yeah, I'm back over there. And this, I, I, I assume, leads back to the dark portal that I needed to take. No, we're back over here. Already I'm getting lost. This isn't funny. I'll probably just go back to the one in... Yeah, okay, now I'm going the right way. I don't know why I got lost earlier there. I did a practice run on this. You'd think I'd actually remember where stuff is, but apparently I didn't. Then again, I did do them for Jurassic Park way back when. And we know how that went. Alright, we are now back at the dark space, so I might as well go ahead and heal up. And I'm going to go ahead and after I go through all this hint stuff again. I'm going to go ahead and save here. And then, yeah, we're going to continue the journey. We're going to do that in the next video. Join me next time where I take on more of Moo and open the place up. Try to find everything. So until then, this is Prince Watercress. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!